Climate change means different things to different people. To some people, it's all about your carbon footprint and how much you need to reduce it by. For other people, it's more about changes to the temperature, extreme weather events, floods, or maybe shoring up sea defences. But for many people, particularly in the Western world, it's a problem about the future, or for the future. One that scientists and engineers are busy trying to solve and will come up with some technology for us to fix the problem. But is it a problem if we wait around for those technological solutions? Does it matter if we wait? Unfortunately for us, it does matter if we wait. And that's because greenhouse gases that are released when we use electricity, when we use different modes of transport, when we heat our homes, or even when we put fertilizers on crops or rear cattle for meat. These are all released into the atmosphere and accumulate over time. Fortunately, we know what the carbon budget should be over the coming century in order that we can avoid certain levels of climate change. And the carbon budget works in a similar way to how a salary works. So if you spend more in the first week of your month in terms of your salary, you know you haven't got very much to spend in the latter weeks. And the same is true for the carbon budget. Because we're releasing emissions at a very high rate now, that means that there's very little space, there's very little budget left to spend in the future years. Waiting for scientists and engineers to come up with a solution to solve the problem, or even waiting for people to change their behaviour, means that emissions are going to continue to accumulate in the atmosphere. Even if scientists come up with a new technology, a carbon-free energy source, by say even 2030, the emissions will have accumulated in the atmosphere to the point that there will be severe damage to our climate system. So what does this tell us about how we should respond? One thing we can do is to identify actions that we can take in the here and now, actions that will deliver reductions in greenhouse gas emissions. To explore this, we've been using models that can quantify the emission reduction potential from these different actions. For example, actions like improving efficiency, technology changes, switching to lower carbon fuels, and they all change the emissions associated with the goods and services that we consume. Together with changes in our patterns of consumption, our ultimate aim is to explore how different measures can all help deliver the deep emission cuts that are necessary to avoid changes in temperature associated with dangerous climate change. Agriculture and food production are exposed to climate change impacts more than other sectors. But at the same time, agriculture emits about 14% of the global greenhouse gases. A response to adapt agriculture and food production to climate change would be that we grow different crops or that we add other things to the crops we grow so we still can meet our food demands. In our project, if we look at how to adapt food production to climate change, we are not forgetting the impact on emissions and that will help us to get a more realistic picture of the future and how we have to adapt to it. And it might not be possible that we can reduce emissions as much as we need to, especially in sectors like agriculture. And that might mean that we have to have much deeper cuts in other sectors to compensate that. In the SCI's flagship project on food, we're making sure that we engage with stakeholders across the project to understand what their expertise and experience tells us for the analysis that we're going to do. So that means that we're working with farmers, manufacturers, retailers, consumers and policy makers to understand the pressures that they currently face and work under and how climate change may fit into that. So we're working with them to look at the opportunities and barriers both for bringing down the emissions in the food that we eat at the moment and managing how adaptive our food system can be in the future to the impacts of climate change. So by working with them throughout the project, we're able to build a set of realistic but challenging ways to manage climate change mitigation and climate change adaptation in the UK food system.